My dad was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1964 when he was 19 years old. And having a father that was type 1, it was, um, it was always kind of in the back of your mind. So I remember when he was had energy and uh, would allow it, he'd tell me that I could come and stand on his feet. And I could hold on to one arm, not the other arm, but and we would walk down the hallway. And that was about the extent of his energy level. But being able to stand on his feet and hold on to his arm was, you know, like I said, I feel like every kid has that memory. It was just a little bit more special for me. By the time I was born, my dad, I think his health started declining. Um, he was legally blind by uh, age 35. At age 38, he was really in progressive renal failure and on dialysis, hemodialysis at the time, which is, uh, you know, he had a tube in his arm, um, constantly had bags and medical things attached to him. At age 40, he underwent a kidney transplant. It was around age 55, he had a heart attack. And that was really um, probably the beginning of his really drastic decline. A year later, his first leg was amputated. A year after his first leg was amputated, his second leg was amputated. Um, and then at age 58, he was diagnosed with end-stage colon cancer uh, and passed away. Technically, he passed away from colon cancer, but everything was attributed to type 1 diabetes. And then at age 21, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And the immediate reaction was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be my father. It brought me to my knees. You realize in small ways, gradually, how, how your life is forever different. I think the biggest change that became really apparent really quickly is that you are always thinking about type 1. So every choice that you're, you're making small and large is has an extra layer onto it. I think the similarities between my dad's type 1 and my type 1 were probably more of that mental sitting on your shoulders all day every day. You know he was diagnosed at 19, I was diagnosed at 21, we were diagnosed at very similar ages but the reality was my type 1 was very different than than his life with type 1. I mean, if you just take the devices and the insulin alone, when my dad was diagnosed, there was one insulin and it was from a pig or a cow. He was injecting with a syringe that was glass and screwed on and sharpening a needle with a pumice stone. Glucometers weren't even in existence when he was diagnosed. He couldn't check his blood sugar. He didn't know what his blood sugar was. Contrast that with my life with type 1. I wear an insulin pump. My insulin is so much smarter in a way to say it. It mimics normal pancreatic function a lot more than the insulin that my father was utilizing. I can check my blood sugar and get that information in three seconds. My dad didn't ever have that technology. To say that our lives with type one are similar, there they are in the, the mental aspects. But when you talk about management and day-to-day -day life with type 1, it's entirely different. And that is 100% due to research. January of this year, um, I started participating in an artificial pancreas trial at the Benaroya Research Institute in Seattle. So the artificial pancreas in the trial that I'm participating is a continuous glucose monitor and a insulin pump. Basically, the continuous glucose monitor transmits information into uh, this algorithm, plugs in that data, and then transmits information to the insulin pump and says, insulin pump, deliver this much insulin. And it does that every five minutes. So this is probably the most exciting part of the trial when I get to eat. Um, typically before I would eat, I would count the carbs, check my blood sugar with my glucometer, uh, enter that information into my pump, and then I would allow my pump to uh, give myself insulin. So 
get so excited when I get to just sit down and not check my blood sugar and not count carbs and not think about anything. I just get to eat a meal like people who aren't type one. And then I can actually watch my blood sugar start rising in the system reading and reacting to that and actually bolusing me as I, as I go. So at about 11 o'clock is when I started eating and you can see that my blood sugar started rising. So this line shows um, what the um, Dexcom sensor is reading. And then this line is actually the insulin that's being delivered based on what the Dexcom is saying as well as the algorithm. Um, so you can see that at 11 o'clock I started eating and about uh, shortly thereafter my blood sugar started rising. So the system was reading and reacting to that rise by giving me um, pretty rapidly increased doses of insulin. About three hours before I'm, I'm gonna exercise, I'll check my blood sugar, see where I'm at, look at how much insulin I have on board. I'll think about, you know, when's the last time I ate? What did I eat? What do I have for the next three hours that I'm gonna be doing? And then from there, I'll probably check every half an hour and continue checking um, until I'm ready to exercise. Today, all I did was went and changed and started exercising and I was watching how this was reading and reacting so it saw that my blood sugar was declining slightly and I can see that it has stopped giving me insulin for the last probably 20 minutes which has stabilized my blood sugar. I don't have to think about it at all. It's um, such a, a weird thing to think about and you wouldn't think that the fact that I get to exercise would be emotional but It is. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> you know, to look at my father's life and, and what he had to myself participating in clinical research of an artificial pancreas blows my mind that that could be a reality.